Hello and welcome back. Today we will be continuing our Victoria 3 tutorial series by doing an updated tier list for trade goods, updated for patch 1.6. Um, now, before we get into this, it's important to talk a little bit about background ideas uh, we will be relying on. And if you have children in the room, please tell them to leave or cover their eyes and most importantly their ears because we can't have them hearing about spreadsheets. We're going to mainly lean on the spreadsheet for discussing the values of the trade goods because obviously you get the trade goods from uh, from the, the, the PMs, not from the spreadsheet themselves, uh, but these will show you kind of uh, ideas of what's important. And one of the reasons why rating stuff on a tier list is so hard is because often different things will be valuable at different points in the game or depending on what it is that you care about. In certain contexts, agrarian goods will actually be really good, but in most contexts, they tend to not be very good. And so just to kind of briefly explain, explain the spreadsheet at the very start here so that, because um, we don't explain it perhaps as often as we should, the main thing we are caring about or the main kind of heuristic for understanding the spreadsheet is we're going to be taking the output the output is the value of all the goods output by the PM of the building. So here we have a tooling workshop. It's on crude tools. It's taking all the output goods and multiplying them by their base cost in order to get this value here in the output thing. For the input, that's going to be all of the input goods multiplied by their base cost. And from this, we get net value added. We then take the net value added and we divide it by one of two things to kind of get the two most important columns here, which is efficiency per 100 workers, which as you might be able to infer, is how much value is getting added per worker and efficiency per week of construction. Generally speaking, and we'll just kind of gloss over this very quickly, in the early game you want to be, you really care about moving pops from subsistence farms, which have a very low efficiency per worker, onto, you know, something that's more efficient per worker, and generally what matters most is a sort of velocity which you get from constructing low construction cost buildings. And so, and we're not going to go into too great of depth, but if you're like depeasanting, you might even tolerate something like a minus 30% price on your softwood because it is basically the best building for depeasanting pops as quickly as possible. But as, as you run out of labor, um, you might end up having a plus 20% price on uh, softwood. And so then the question is, is well, how are we going to rate the softwood? Because... Are we rating it because it's so good in the early game, or are we rating, rating it because it's good in the late game? Uh, because it's not very efficient per 100 workers, but it's disgustingly efficient per week of construction, even at the very, very early sawmills PM. And so, um, this is going to be the main source of considerations we're going into, but there are other considerations as well. Like, for example, um, for industrial goods, uh, steel mills and motor industries employ the most machinists. So if you're specifically trying to empower trade unionists, you maybe have some sort of strategy where you build a disproportionately high amount of these buildings. And so it, it, there's a lot to keep. Uh, you know, sort of kind of, <laughs> there's a lot of things to keep in mind when thinking about this, but there's going to be several play patterns that we are interested in for rating stuff in here. And that's going to be, do we really want to export the good? When you export a good, you increase the proportion of the building that produces that good in your economy, um, unless it's a split good. We'll talk a little bit about split goods. Um, do we want to build the good ourselves, uh, which is very similar to do we want to export it? Um, will do we prefer do we prefer PMs that produce it? or actively don't produce it. So in the case of luxury goods, these are split PMs, and also in the case of liquor, is so split PM with groceries and grain, respectively. There's no independent liquor production. And then also um, just kind of a sense of how dense or how many, what per percentage of our economy do we want to be in these buildings relative to what the game would trend towards if the AI just built it. Something like this. Okay, so let's get into it, and we are going to be starting with all of the agrarian goods. Now, agrarian goods are generally not preferred um, because they are not the most efficient. Uh, at, they're kind of efficient at de-peasanting pops. However, you do not get anywhere near as much investment pool. And investment pool, or uh, how much investment pool you are getting, uh, you know, per week of construction in the very, very early game is a very important thing, and you don't get a lot from the agrarian stuff. And then when you run out of labor, the agrarian stuff tends to not be as efficient, um, you know, per worker, with a couple of exceptions. So, uh, with the agrarian goods, we are going to put uh, wheat at the top of B tier, with a caveat that we are mainly talking about here rye and rice. Rye is going to be worth producing mainly because it outputs uh, liquor. 
in its uh, potatoes PM, which is going to be more useful for increasing SOL than any of the other grain buildings. We are also including rice kind of in this consideration because rice is a disgusting building. You see, rice, uh, <laughs> rice employs 10,000 laborers or 9,000 laborers, depending on the PMs, uh, and it only costs 200 construction. So on a per construction basis, it is the most obscene building at, uh, you know, getting your pops out from the uh, subsistence farms. However, with the rice specifically, it's important to keep in mind, if you collapse the price of grain, which you often will very quickly if you're producing rice farms, suddenly they're not profitable, you're not producing this type of value, but sprinkling in a bit uh, as any country that has rice is probably a good idea. So we have the caveat that this B is largely talking about rice uh, and uh, wheat, uh, rye, uh, sprinkling it in, not actively building a lot of it. Otherwise, the grain would maybe be in C tier where it's not absolutely terrible to build, but we would rather rely on importing it specifically. Okay, next up we have fabric. Now, of the PMs for uh, agriculture that are using plantations, fabric is actually a little bit better than what it looks like in terms of the output because it's important to remember that you get 25% extra throughput on fabric uh, from the cotton gym uh, technology, uh, which is not available for other ones. So if you are gonna be building plantations, you'd rather be building these. They are pretty efficient per construction after you get pump jacks, uh, as are kind of all plantations, but uh, fabric is placing kind of a special, in a special sort of slot. And also for building up specifically uh, you know, high uh, mappy considerations, um, you can build a really tall clothes manufactory where you have a lot of fabric and silk. And so these will also generally be a little bit better um, than the other agrarian goods. So we're gonna put fabric and B tier behind, um, behind the grain. And um, this is kind of close to the front of B tier and then silk will be kind of towards the back of B tier where you might wanna build it for mappy reasons. It's not terrible, um, you know, once you get pump jacks, if you still have a lot of peasants and you're on pump jacks and you're not causing unemployment, one of the problems with silk specifically is often you are building over a rice plantation, which employs 10k pops. But let's see if we can find the silk. The silk kind of has a normal middling-ish uh, type of PM. It's not the best. It is a little bit better to import it from Qing if you can, because they do have an advantage with silk. But okay, it, it's going to be reasonable enough. And you can specifically in like places like India, you can build tall with these with a really heavy, um, you know, uh, throughput bonus on the plantation and then build clothes on top of it. And it will be relatively speaking strong relative to other agrarian goods. The rest of the agrarian goods are uh, going to be a lot worse. We are going to put the uh, class of uh, drinks or beverages, which is tea, coffee and um tea, coffee, and wine. We are going to put these all in C tier. We're going to put wine at the very front of the C tier, generally because wine is going to have you most places that where there is arable land that has wine as an option do not have some of the better options like cotton and silk um, or opium, which is going to be the best. And so we're going to put wine a little bit ahead and then coffee and tea for the same reason. I think most of the buildings that have tea have access to either silk or dyes, um, which is not going to be a, as much the case with cotton. And so this greater flexibility is going to be nice. We are going to put dyes, uh, you know, just ahead of silk here because the PM is slightly better. And you'd rather import, um, you know, from Great Ching, the silk. Uh, and then finally, we are going to put opium in S tier. Opium has a very, very strong PM. Um, the PM here is going to be, you know, uh, giving you enormous amount of efficiency, both per worker and per construction. Um, you can, you almost never are wrong to be building it. And also, you're going to end up consuming a lot of opium in your military. So having it is also important, uh, which is kind of a basis that's different than like, this sort of consideration how efficient it is how important it is to have access to it because if you're going to be driving down the street with your loud car you definitely want to be having some opium so we're going to have that as well um and i think that is all the agrarian nope there's the d tier agrarian goods apologies um so fruit you kind of would prefer there to be less fruit in your market you would prefer demand be created for groceries uh that way groceries can be a little bit more expensive in price you have to you know build groceries for the military Groceries aren't that great overall, but you'd still rather your pops consume other goods, I think. Um, and we just generally don't like the fruit plantations. Uh, the, the 
The sugar is going to be a little bit different, difficult. We're going to put it kind of towards the back of C tier. I think sugar plantations are not very good, but the way you should get sugar is through your grain and specifically rice farms. But we're going to put these at the back of C tier. Uh, and then the uber, uber F tier, the very worst of the worst. Well, this isn't the worst of the worst, but it also goes in D tier. The PM overall for um, the... Uh, the livestock ranches is generally speaking a lot worse than any other agrarian building even worse than the most F tier um, you know thing in the tobacco plantations but the reason that the, the tobacco plantations aren't going to be that good is actually for a side reason which is um, here we gotta see we gotta go into Victoria 3 needs we need to find pop needs in order to explain why and so we're going to scroll down here and uh for the for the the intoxicant class which is including tobacco there are three things you can consume you can consume opium tobacco or liquor uh you would rather consume the liquor and the opium for several reasons um but the, the pms for the production of these things are generally better and because there's a cap at 75, and also because substitution works in a very funny way, which is the more of it that there are sell orders, the more your pops consume. As more tobacco gets produced, this raises the price and increases the demand of the tobacco. This is not preferable. You'd rather the pops consume opium. That way you can build more profitable opium uh, plantations if you have opium available and vice versa for liquor, uh, especially because the split PM, uh, you do not want liquor price to like absolutely collapse uh, when you're trying to build groceries to get your military going. You would generally want something looking a little bit more stable. Um, maybe... <sighs> So the one the one exception to this is if you're playing a Muslim country, um, but uh, because your pops have a taboo towards liquor, uh, but we are going to put tobacco in the uberest of D tiers. You actively don't want it to be produced. Um, okay. So that is all of the agrarian goods. Um, next up, we'll use the basic or low-level consumer goods, um, and so uh, let's get into those a little bit now. Um, we're going to put services, we're going to put it behind, we're just going to put it right here, kind of in a middling to high uh, C tier, or sorry, B tier, or just like, just kind of a middle tier type of good, with the understanding that with services in particular, we're not actually constructing the building, and most of the way we are feeling or ranking things has to do with us constructing the building. Uh, the PMs, some of the PMs on uh, services are extremely strong. Um, you know, uh, we have uh, like the urban amenities, specifically the streetlights are disgustingly strong PM, um, but we're not actively constructing buildings in order to get services. We're constructing urban buildings. The services are extremely strong in the early game. They fall off in the late game. Um, but since it's not informing as much decision-making in terms of what you're building, although to some extent you are creating urbanization through higher construction buildings and this type of thing, um, because of that we are, we're just not, um, we're not going to like rank it. It's just going to be like middling because we just can't rank it because we're not using construction, the normal resource we are investing, um, or pops really because they'll pull as many pops as equilibrium efficient. Um, and so it, it's too difficult to rank. Next up, we will have uh, simple clothing. Uh, actually, we'll save that one for last. Okay, so fish is the only other, there's only two buildings that are capitalist owned. Uh, and cost 200 construction. And those two buildings are the Chop Chops, the wood, which is disgustingly efficient and is an important input for a lot of, you know, kind of uh, a lot of important PMs early on. You use it in the tools, for example. You also use it in furniture manufacturers. Um, the first one is the Chop Chops, 200 construction and is capitalist owned. The second one is going to be the fishing wharves, which we are lumping the whaling stations in with them when we are talking about them. We are thinking of the the, the whaling stations as being the same as fish for the purposes of this, uh, rather than the whaling station being a combination of meat and oil, which is what it is. Um, both are extremely strong. Um, they're not quite as strong. Um, you know, PMs as the wood, uh, but they do only cost 200 construction. They will be extremely good um, at getting your pops from out from being peasants. Fish would be super, super, super much better 
the, you can quote me on that, um, if substitution worked in an intuitive way where it would actually decrease the price of grain if fish were cheaper than grain, if this were the case, uh, then this would allow you to disproportionately increase the capitalist ownership by depressing the consumption of grain and the production of grain. Unfortunately, that's not how substitution works. But we will be putting the fish into A tier. And then one of the reasons it struggles a little bit is because it's difficult to get high throughput and... I mean, I still think you just, uh, any place you have a lot of peasants, you just put the fish at the very least on auto expand. I think is it, well, this wouldn't be the perfect strategy, but I think it's quite strong and strong enough if you want to keep your auto queue moving. And then we are going to put the wood in S tier. The wood's our favorite. The wood does fall off in the late game. And interestingly, I think that fish might even be more efficient per worker in the late game as you enter super late because it has some of the very best labor saving PMs. Uh, specifically, Flash Freeze is one of the best labor saving PMs in the entire game. But uh, it's going to fall off in terms of efficiency per worker, but because it's so ubiquitous and important in the early game, we're going to put it in S tier. It's not going to always be super, super, it's not going to always be like super great, but even, even in the late game, it will give you a hefty, uh, it will be on a per construction basis, the best way for pursuing, uh, here we can jump into game real quick. Um, it will be the best for pursuing specifically this modifier here, um, which is going to be migration attraction. If you're looking to get available employment, building a ton of wood everywhere is going to still be good because even if your pops leave, and in Castile, they might not have left. Well, I, I, they, I think they're still employing the logging camps. But even if they leave the logging camps, this available employment modifier has gotten a lot stronger in 1.6, uh, where it's capped at plus 30 instead of plus 10. And so it can allow for a lot more migration. So jumping back into the browser here. Uh, we are going to keep the wood up here. Uh, for the rest of the simple goods, we are going to put glass in A tier. Uh, and, or actually, no, the glass is a mixed good. We're going to come back to glass. Paper, um, paper's PM is not very good. Um, but it's very, very important for you to have production of it uh, internally because running a shortage of paper is catastrophic. Um, and so you definitely don't want to run here. Is it in industrial goods? I forget where we put it. Um, it's not really the best PM, even on paper bleaching. You know, its efficiency per construction is not that good. Um, its efficiency per 100 work is not that good. It is good for building um, mappy economies of scale or not scale, uh, economies of... Uh, Vertical integration, it's very useful for where, if you have a place with sulfur, putting paper, explosives, and fertilizer all there. To that extent, it's really nice. Uh, but the PM overall is just nothing too crazy to write home about. Um, especially, like, yeah, in the... There's no phase of the game where it's, like, extremely strong. And so we're going to put the p uh, paper into C tier here. We're going to put it ahead of the agrarian goods, though, because it is still capitalist owned um, and it can stimulate demand very. This is kind of an important thing to note. It can stimulate demand for sulfur. And so there's maybe arguments you can make for wanting to put this higher because the sulfur PM is so disgusting and we'll get to it in a little bit. But because the sulfur PM is so, so strong, um, you know, if you build paper and then you export paper, the downstream effects of doing this are quite strong. And so even though the PM itself doesn't look better, maybe there's an argument that it should be in B tier or something. Um, I think that conditionally in sulfur states, you often put down, or the play pattern I've been engaging in is I put down paper, I put down fertilizer, I put down sulfur, I put down explosives, and I put them all on auto expand. I think that this is reasonably strong. I don't think it's a fully min max strategy, but it, pre uh, it prevents you from pulling out a lot of your hair uh, because it's a lot easier. Now, transport sucks. Uh, the PMs for it are just really bad. And the only reason you are building up getting transportation really, truly, uh, is because you need the infrastructure. Um, and so it's, mo it's mainly about the infrastructure. It's rough. Uh, but the PMs are just awful. And so we're going to put the transportation. I mean, so even the, the, the PMs, even from the perspective of, hey, I'm using the transport to labor save, they barely help you labor save because you still need to use a whole bunch of labor in the buildings. And it's not a 5K like cost building in terms of labor. If you're using the better PMs, it costs more than 5K pops uh, in order to employ up the building. It's just very, very inefficient. And so we're going to put it in F tier or D tier rather, R F tier. Um, and now I think we have uh, groceries. Groceries is a tough one. Groceries uh, 
are important to have internally. Uh, the PMs are really, really bad until you get onto the easy bake ovens, um, at which point they kind of pick up a little bit in terms of, well, even then they're still not that good. Now the, the PMs for groceries just aren't very good. Um, the thing is, is this is marginal if I recall correctly. I don't think this is the overall. I think that this 5.9 is marginal. This is kind of the, the main output. And so it looks a little better. Um, yeah, I think that we're looking at marginal value added here uh, per the, oh no wait, it's with baking powder? Yeah, it is with baking powder, just kidding. The real problem is that extra labor gets added with kind of all the PMs. You know, if you're on vacuum canning, patent stills, baking powder, it costs 6,200 pops. Uh, and so even though your output per building it looks really high, the output per worker isn't very high. And you're outputting, you know, things that you are going to need for the military, but it's not. So I don't think you want to import this stuff uh, because if you somehow end up running shortages because you get embargoed or this type of thing, but importing this stuff could be reasonable. You could import groceries. I don't know. Um, it's a little bit a little bit tough. The PMs are pretty bad. So we're going to put the groceries in uh, C tier here. And we're going to put them a little bit ahead of uh, the agrarian stuff. Because it is still capitalist owned. And this leaves us entirely with split goods here. So now we're going to talk about the split goods left in kind of the consumption thing. And the thing is, is for all the split good PMs, it's going to be difficult to... If we come into needs and we come in and we take a look at the luxuries, we see that it's a max 50% for all of these. And we're talking about the split good luxury goods here. Um, so it's gonna be a max 50%, minimum 10%. And so what this means is, is that with the way that substitution works, if we actively pull back the number of luxury clothes, it's not the case that luxury clothes would go to the moon, consumption would go down because there's fewer sell orders in the market, and then this would raise demand for luxury furniture and porcelain. Uh, and so the question is, is of the luxury goods, which ones do we really not want to turn off? And the truth is, is that you never want to turn off luxury furniture. Now, this was exceptionally the case uh, in 1.5 when there was always a glut of hardwood before the hardwood got nerfed. But the reason you want to never turn off luxury furniture is because there's more reasons to turn off luxury clothes and especially porcelain. When we turn off the porcelain production, we get more glass. Very often we are experiencing a situation where Glass is way more expensive because there's way more demand for glass than there is for porcelain. It's way more expensive than it's the other good that the dual output is having. What makes the dual output goods or buildings the best or most profitable is if the costs of each of these are roughly speaking equal. And so you'll basically uh, turn on or turn off glassworks kind of early and the textile one we'll talk about in a sec. Uh, but because you're so willing to turn off um, uh, what is it, uh, ceramics and bone china in or because you're running just super, super expensive glass because this is a very common play pattern, we are going to put glass in A tier. And this is driven by glass being a construction good and a consumer good um, as opposed to, you know, uh, the other ones where the basic version is not going to be a consumer good. Now, the other one uh, is going to be between luxury or regular clothing and luxury clothing. If we turn off the demand for luxury clothing here, um, or one reason to want to turn down the luxury clothing is on a needs basis, your pops will generally consume way more clothing than furniture, basic clothing than basic furniture. So in terms of increasing SOL, uh, it will be a little bit better to uh, have more regular clothing than it will be to have regular furniture. This is one of the very strong reasons. Uh, secondarily, and let's jump into game and just take a quick look at this uh, kind of first. Um, so if we jump in, we look at pop needs and we look at what they are consuming, we see that clothes are way more consumed and they will almost always be significantly more consumed than furniture. So if we're going to use our luxury strategy in such a way that's going to depress the price of uh, regular clothing, uh, or of either one of the basic goods, we'd rather depress the price of regular clothing. And so what we mean by this is if we increase the price of, uh, if we increase the price of the luxury clothes, right, we can then decrease the price of the regular clothing. 
Uh, similarly, if we increase the price of uh, the furniture, uh, we could tolerate a lower uh, luxury furniture price. Um, and so we will more often, we would rather, you know, turn off the luxury clothes first. And then there's a secondary reason for this. And the secondary reason is that the luxury clothes PM isn't as good. Uh, if we take a look at consumer goods and coming in here and we look at craftsman sewing, craftsman sewing actually on a per worker basis is gonna be better than elastics. And to be fair, they have nerfed um, the, or they've changed rather, the tooling workshop to consume less rubber. So now, you before you didn't want to use elastics because the rubber tools are an insane PM and elastics usually get in the way of using rubber tools. But on a per worker basis, it's not going to actually be as efficient and it's not going to add really that much marginal value. Each one takes an additional 500 workers relative to the previous one. So Craftsman Sewing plus 500, elastics plus 1000. With the furniture manufacturers, um, you're experiencing a similar phenomenon on the per worker basis here. Um, but uh, the hardwood glut note, we got to delete this because this is no longer the case. Uh, but I still think you would rather have a slightly depressed um, basic, uh, you would rather depress the basic good more. And so I think very often you're either on craftsman sewing, uh, in addition to rubber just being harder to get, or you even go uh, to just only producing regular clothing. I hope that explanation made sense. But we're going to put stuff in on our spreadsheet. So because we, would, we have a bias towards producing regular clothes, we're going to put this behind glass here. We have a slight bias towards producing regular clothes, and very often you will be able to import um, or get fabric and silk cheap such that clothing overall is going to be efficient. And then for furniture, we are never turning on off the furniture PM, so we put it down here. An important note is almost all the goods we actively want to export uh, as they get higher up towards S tier, but the important exception is going to be glass and uh, you know uh, basic clothing, and to a, another extent, um, well, we also don't want to export this, but it's lower down on the list because often you want to export something, you increase the price, you increase the amount you want to build of it. We actually don't want to export uh, basic clothing. And instead, it's generally good to export all of the luxuries um, that are available in porcelain and luxury furniture and uh, luxury clothing because of the way needs work. Uh, needs are some needs are exponential meaning they do not increase in a linear fashion as your standard of living goes up but instead increase way way high which means it costs more and more wealth to increase your standard of living which means your wealth on a per ducat dollar you know a doubloon basis is going to be worse um, at uh, increasing SOL because of this we would rather the luxury stuff be a little bit more expensive even though the overall strategy for mixed goods is generally the if they're equal price this is going to create the most profitable scenario we would rather slightly increase the price of the luxuries relative to the other goods because this means this means that um we can uh build more of the building and have more positive sol effects what ends up happening is if the luxury price is uh gets extremely tanked uh what you would do is you would start shutting off luxury pms um, if you just have an absolute glut of luxury clothes, luxury furniture, porcelain, you start shutting them off. Uh, that way it, the building can be more profitable. And so to some extent, you prefer these to be more expensive, um, even though the, generally the strategy is not like that. So we're going to put luxury furniture up in S tier because we're never turning off the furniture. We're going to put luxury clothing in B tier because we will sometimes turn it off. Uh, but other times not. Let's see, where did we want it? Right here is fine. Actually, let's put it here. And finally, we have the last luxury of kind of the normal situation, and that is porcelain, which we will probably be the one, the first one to either turn off or turn down. However, I still think it's a very strong strategy to export porcelain. The reason you turn off the PM is because you can't get the price anywhere near as high as glass, and to make the building more profitable, you turn it on down to only glass production. But if the prices are normalized, um, it's always better to be producing porcelain. This is important to emphasize. If the prices are normalized, 
the ceramics and bone china PMs are adding a value and they're adding a ton of value. But if the if you somehow super decrease the price of the outputs, like if uh, if the output if we had minus fifty percent price on porcelain, then this output would only be three hundred, right? Instead of six hundred, and then the input is only to, is still two hundred, and then it's an additional five hundred workers just to provide one hundred you know goods worth of value. This isn't worth it. And so um, because we often turn off the porcelain. Um, when it gets super super cheap or turn it down just in a few places often not everywhere um, because there is a minimum need of 10 percent we're gonna have it in c tier so uh for the split goods and i know it's been a kind of long explanation you kind of the you see an inverse relation where if glass is high porcelain's going to be low if this is high then this other one's going to be low um and then uh if this one's low then the other one's going to be high if this makes all makes sense, but you don't want to export uh, the basic goods, you always want to be exporting the luxury. Okay, with that in mind, let's kind of finish out the luxury goods here, and then we'll talk about the military goods. Now, to be fair, or to be honest, to be fair and honest, uh, the PMs for the uh, electrics, electronics industries, not that great. However, often the prices will get relatively inflated, um, and I think that it's kind of fine to have it on. And then telephones and radios are going to be really important for late game PMs, either in the military or in, uh, you know, telephone switchboards for the government administration centers. So as a result, uh, these are kind of just PMs you kind of need to have on. So we're not going to put them super, super low. We definitely don't want to somehow lose our supply of this. We would not want to purely import this things because we want to have domestic supply. Because if we suddenly start running a shortage of radios or this, that's not ideal. And so we're going to put it uh, down here. Uh, alcohol is an intoxicant. Um, it's kind of difficult to rate because it's a secondary good. There's nothing that primarily produces alcohol. It's a secondary good with the groceries, which aren't that efficient. And it's a secondary uh, good with the grain, which again is not abundantly efficient. Um, we're going to put it behind luxury clothing here uh, with the idea that it's good to get because it's really good for increasing SOL. If we come back into the scene and we take a look, uh, generally speaking, when the pops are relatively poor, um, they will be consuming a lot of uh, intoxicants as part of their goods basket, which for will be liquor, tobacco, and opium. Um, to, uh, liquor is a little bit preferable, was prefer preferable to tobacco, but overall, I mean, so the thing is, is I think you just never turn off the liquor PM, or I think you generally don't want to turn off the pick, uh, liquor PM. This one even has it as more profitable, so maybe that's not the case because we have an exceptionally cheap liquor price. So in order to normalize the prices, it would be maybe reasonable to turn this down specifically. Um, but uh, overall, I, I think that you would need that exact scenario we just saw to like want to turn it down. Um, and getting that stuff cheap can be very, very good for increasing SOL. Uh, if your SOL is considerably lower than what we have here in Iberia, uh, because it will be one of the highly produced or highly consumed things. So let's jump back into the, the browser here. Next up, we have fine art. Now, fine art, I think, is uh, generally um, not a good you want to build a lot of. However, I do think there is a strategy. I guess we have to jump back into the game again. I do think there's a strategy that's relatively strong with regards to fine art, fine art and that is in the capital. I think we've moved the capital over here. Uh, just putting, setting a fine art, uh, art up on auto expand. And the reason for this is your capital gets a little bit of a bonus to clout. Um, if we take a look here and we hover capital state, that's not the only bonus. Uh, we will see plus 25% universal pop political strength. So if we have academics, generally speaking, we want the, uh, the intelligentsia to be a little bit stronger. So if we are going to have academics somewhere, it's nice to have them in the capital for that plus 25% political strength. And so uh, if you're going to have academics, which they do employ quite a bit of, um, it's going to be nice to have them here. So there's a bunch of academics here. Um, this is nice. Uh, also, we get a little bit of migration attraction. The, what is it, the standard wage or the wage multiplier of academics is also really high. So technically it gives you a little bit more migration attraction in the capital. Um, but I think there's something to building the arts academies and the universities in the capital for specifically the small smidgen of, uh, you know, political clout. But overall the building, the, the PM on this building just sucks really hard. And so it's not something you would want to build with the intention of exporting. Uh, if we take a look at Arts Academies, just not very good. 
but I do think it's worth just putting on auto expand in the capital specifically because of the academics reason. So we're going to put this in a D tier. I'm going to put it ahead of that because I think there's I think there's a strategy where you're building it. And finally, we do have gold here. And that's just the uberest of S tiers. It's just by far the best because not only is gold just a disgustingly good PM, uh, like this is for the this is the for the output of the gold. Gold is always even priced, and this is always the output you're getting on the gold. Although to be fair, your inputs can vary in price. It's pretty much the most efficient uh, PM in the game on either a per worker or um, you know per uh, per what is it. Uh, construction basis it's just disgusting on a per construction basis if you have everything diesel pump plus dynamite or just like the whole shebang uh it's going to be just extremely extremely good and it's the same as sulfur but in addition to this you get all the extra minting on top uh this is not including the minting that you get which is free money modifier which is extremely strong gold mines are just obscene it's categorically not close what's the best thing to build the best thing is definitely gold in fact the entire like expansion metagame in my opinion revolves around just getting gold because gold is so valuable and not only is gold really valuable on a per construction basis but gold fields cost is zero construction and so yeah it's just going to be insane next up we're going to talk about the military goods and the general idea of the military goods is going to be um you want these because you want the military um they don't occupy a large proportion of your economy anyways some of them you'd prefer to occupy a smaller portion some you'd prefer to occupy a higher portion um but like overall sometimes you're just shrugging your soldiers and you're saying yeah but i want to use the pms um so okay um first up we're going to talk about small arms now small arms needs have changed a little bit small arms can actually be consumed for leisure of the leisure pms or of all the things that can be consumed in leisure small arms actually have the best pm in the game and it's like <laughs> it's not particularly close the arms industries are just super super efficient uh they're really efficient per week of construction they're also very very solid per 100 workers um i think it's the best manufacturer in the game uh with kind of like some asterisks in that um you're going to be able to produce way more glassworks on arms industries you're very rarely going to hit economies of scale so it's perhaps inappropriate to compare it because you're not going to often have a 51 or you'll have a 51 uh, level arms industries and then you will not have um like local mappy niceness out of it um and then also like uh the tools are just all over the place so tools are probably overall the best manufactured good um but uh the pm itself is not going to be as good as um small arms so if you can get your pops to consume more small arms great if it, you could pick anything to form an obsession with it would undoubtedly be small arms um small arms are just absolutely insane uh, in terms of the pm uh and to a lesser extent artillery is as well so we're gonna put artillery in here as well uh, i think we put it uh behind the fish just behind the fish um again you can't there's no pop consumption of artillery but the artillery pm is very very strong uh and is a little bit better than it was last patch in particular in 1.5 uh because you always had a glut of hardwood the hardwood pms have since gotten nerfed such that they're net neutral or negative uh but when they're you just got a hyper efficient to super super duper cheap hardwood the fact that arms industries was one of the few industries that produced a ton of hardwood was insane um uh or it, it consumed more than the artillery now the artillery is more in line so it's okay I think recoil mech uh, is going to be a little bit less efficient per oil used. Um, bolt action rifle per oil used is one of the most efficient PMs in the game. Uh, and so that it's considerably worse per oil used is often another consideration. Um, so, okay. Um, but it, we'll put it in there. Um, the tanks PMs are super, super crazy strong. Uh, so we will put the tanks in B tier. Um, mainly because I think that what the strategy is with the war machines in particular, uh, which is a split good, we're going to put this in B tier, we're going to put this in D tier, is that you decide how many tanks you want to be consuming, and then you kind of, in order to get your tanks and your airplanes price roughly level, you adjust how much airplanes you are consuming uh, kind of accordingly. Uh, airplanes are really good on landing squads that are going to be landing unopposed. This is kind of their best use, but um, you will not be using them all up in that manner. And I kind of think aircraft carriers are maybe not super worth it. I, I, I don't know. I need a little bit more experience with the naval PMs, but with the level of experience I have... I think that you kind of, you decide what you want with the tanks first, and these are more critical, and then you figure out the airplanes later. Um, next up is ammunition. The PM for ammunition is not very good. Uh, it has uh, something like, uh, oop, where is it? Where is Harvey Dent? 
Where's the ammunition? Okay, munition plants, not very good. I mean, it's like, it's kind of your standard not very good. Well, actually, it's kind of particularly bad, but you do not want to run a shortage of munition plants, which creates this odd scenario where, um, I think with all of the military goods, here, we're gonna slot it in just ahead of this, um, and uh, also for the war the military shipyards these also in particular are not very good and capital ships being worse than steel ships just uh, is pretty nutter um so and overall the consumption profile of the military shipyards this isn't something we're talking about too much but when you're consuming a good that's not very efficient this is a preferable thing to not have uh and if i recall correctly they just consume a ton of steel and steel's not very efficient uh and they consume steel and also coal and coal's consumption is fine and engines not very efficient um you know uh electricity and engines and this type of stuff and the earlier pms we're gonna put these in d tier um so i don't think you yeah we're gonna put them in d tier now all this said on the military goods I think with, uh, I think you don't export ships, but with all the goods that your demand is going to increase when you mobilize your army, I think it's super reasonable to export all these. So that's small arms, cannons, uh, tanks, uh, munitions, airplanes, anyone who will take them, you export them. And the reason for this is that, um, when you are not mobilized, this will help keep the price high, which will keep the building profitable. Uh, and when you do mobilize, the size of your trade routes will just decrease. Uh, and, you know, the prices will normalize. And in this way, you can extra avoid having shortages. And if you are the main supplier of arms for your uh, any country you fight, um, you might even cause them to have a shortage when they full mobilize and they get cut off from their demand of the good. And so I think exporting all of these is worthwhile. Uh, but they're in, like, this is what I mean by saying uh, how badly we want to export it is not a good metric because we want to export all of these. But it's important to recognize that the munitions and the war machines industries just kind of suck. Uh, and these industries are great. You'd just love to keep exporting all those. But you can't build them that really high. You're never getting max economies of scale with, like, uh, or you're rarely getting it with small arms and cannons. So they're not as good as they look in terms of, like, looking at the PM. Um, and so we're going to have them like that. Okay, and that leaves us uh, what is generally the most powerful class of goods, uh, which is the yellow goods. They're our fa favorite. If it's yellow, they'd be mellow. Something like that. I don't know why dyes is in here, but... Uh, well, okay, no, yeah, I understand why. Because it's uh, like consumer, basic consumer good, luxury consumer good, war good, and then like all other good. Uh, but we consider this an agrarian good. Okay. Uh, and so let's talk just about the minerals first because the minerals are just like super stand out as being very strong um, They are going to be very good on a per construction basis because they have 400 construction all the manufacturers have either 600 or 800 uh, And so they're gonna be very efficient per work of week of construction, but they're also efficient per week or week or before bleh, per worker especially because they have a ton of really good labor saving PMs uh, because their net value added is really high and they're also capitalist owned, um, you know, and so the the mines really just have it all. Mines are just always good. They're always good to build a ton of exporting the goods is never terrible. And I think that, you know, you will when you're on condensing and engine pump and you're like getting some of the later PMs on some of the you know manufacturers you will be more efficient per worker in some of the manufacturers but it's not going to be crazy more efficient and then diesel pump is just an insane pm it's like one of the very best pms in the game it's probably the more most rushable tier 5 tech um and so you know we're gonna have it in here but like uh if you take a look at the labor like the labor like gets really cut down a lot by some of the pms and it's just super efficient per worker too just really really stand out it's it's good early it transitions to being great late uh and we're gonna have all of the mines are going to be in a combination of s or top of a tier um there's gonna be a little bit of differences uh iron and lead mines are the same in terms of the output they're very strong sulfur mines are tied for the best in the game next to gold mines and anything you can do to increase the price of sulfur, allowing you to build more sulfur mines, is going to be really nice. So you want to export sulfur, and to a lesser extent, this makes everything that has sulfur as an input a bit bigger, better. And so that's going to be, you know, fertilizer, uh, paper, and uh, explosives. Explosives, um, if I recall correctly, I think they input fertilizer. I'm not 100% sure, and don't input sulfur. I'm the, it's escaping me right now, but I know they have sulfur inside the chain, so it's all, it's all going to be good there. And then coal is going to be, um, you know, coal is going to be a little bit worse than uh, iron and lead mines. However, 
I think Cole generally has way better mappy. Um, Cole will be play well with just about everything with it because coal is used in a bunch of labor saving PMs. So if you build anything where there's coal and then you use water tube boiler, you're using coal. And so I think coal is actually a little bit better uh, than the iron and the lead. And so for this in mind, we're gonna put sulfur at the back of S tier. Um, sulfur is going to be you know better throughout the game, but I think I think wood is just so obscene for, let's actually even put wood higher here. Uh, I think wood is just disgusting in the early game. It's so strong. Um, and it's just like far and away like the best thing. Uh, we're gonna put coal kind of at the top of A tier here. And then behind coal, we're gonna put iron, which is going to be more important. Uh, iron frame buildings are like important in the early game. And then we're gonna put lead. Um, and this is gonna be how we put the minerals out. Hardwood, uh, now that they have nerfed, uh, the, the hardwood production to be exactly net neutral. Uh, you're just trading softwood for hardwood. Uh, we kind of want to put it like next to services, to be honest. I think that, uh, you know, from a mappy perspective, it's kind of awkward that focused hardwood, you'd rather have the more balanced PM, the hardwood production, be the one that's an even trade off. You lose value on hardwood production, so you always want to mix and match. Um, turning places onto focused hardwood, but you wanna have your softwood and hardwood prices be roughly equal. Um, this will be the most efficient and we're just gonna put it kind of in C tier where it's like, uh, this. okay, this is attached to this. So we could maybe put this up here, uh, but in principle, we actually just want this to be completely equalized price with the softwood. And we're thinking of this in terms of how much we're turning up the hardwood PM rather than how much we're building the logging camp, which is kind of how we're processing this. Um, next up we have tools. Now tools is insane because it's used in almost everything um, uh, and it's used in particular in the mines and the machines tools PM is super super strong and it is going to be pretty much the strongest uh, industry that you can be building um, without, uh, uh, how should I say, it? it's going to be like the strongest Okay, so Glassworks, I think, is, is Glassworks like the only one that's going to be better? No, it's not even better with hardwood plastic. It's like uh, the marginal bone china is better, but this is just talking, looking at it on the margin. I wish I had this combined. Or is this combined? This is with plus D19. Um, so it looks like this is combined. So um, the, the, the only building that's like going to have a better efficiency per week of construction and efficiency per 100 workers is going to be uh this is well, this is all messed up because this is calculating it if you look up here this is calculating it on the basis of uh this is for the whole building and then this is for the marginal um but you know uh it is going to be a little bit better uh just looking at the base pm however uh tooling workshops has way better labor saving pms just generally speaking and so um, I think that it ends up on top considering hardware plastics not very efficient per worker. I'm starting to ramble here, uh, but the basic idea is that tooling workshops is just going to be, of, of all the manufacturing industries, tooling workshops is going to be like u ubiquitous, by far the best. You're, this is going to be the building that you're pushing levels to 51 on first. Um, you will very actively want to push tools. Tools is a part of the essential loop in construction, whereas these other manufactured goods, with the exception of stuff like steel, are much less so. Um, you know, the only thing that comes close is the glassworks, uh, but glassworks will often run into price problems where um, the mixed prices are making it less efficient. Um, if you look at like electric sewing, it's not particularly close. Uh, if you start to include the other PMs um, on elastics and like this type of stuff, it starts to get better. But again, you're going to generally depress the price of goods. Whereas um, tools, there's almost always like, it's really hard to get pull away from the demand for tools. Um, it has the best, like some of the best mappy. It's almost always gonna play into something really well on the mappy to some degree to either buoy the uh, tools price or to uh, decrease the input price. Uh, tools is just very strong. Uh, you know, we're gonna put it in S tier. We're gonna put it ahead of the sulfur, even though on paper the sulfur PM is just better overall. Um, uh, just as a result of like how your market works, um, I think tools is just gonna be a lot stronger. Um, next up we have, uh, let's talk about steel. So steel is not a very efficient PM. 
Uh, they're not very good uh, overall, not very efficient per worker. Uh, electric arc process notably requires electricity, which is a bit of a drawback. Open earth process is also not going to be super good. They're somewhat efficient per worker. This is the thing I'm trying to highlight here with the with the purple one. Um, but uh, you, they're not very efficient per construction. It's an 800 construction cost building. Generally, you tolerate an expensive steel price. I think it's possibly the case that you even want to ex import steel pretty aggressive early on. Uh, but then when you start running out of workers, uh, it becomes less good. But... Um, I don't think you want to be too aggressive about exporting steel unless you have a huge steel throughput bonus and it's actually like pretty good. Um, and so we're gonna put steel in C tier. Uh, engines is kind of similar. The PM is uh, similarly, or motor industry is similarly bad. It's similarly dependent on uh, like electricity for electric engines. Uh, steam engines is not very good, right? Steam engines efficiency per week to construction or per hundred work is not particularly good. Electric engines requires electricity. Diesel engines looks okay, except for you when you realize that it takes 50 oil and the net value per oil is only 16. It's just very, very underwhelming. So I think you're kind of stuck on electric engines and uh, it also, uh, unlike steel mills, which use the inputs of iron and coal, uh, which generally you want to produce a ton of. So when you create buy orders for this, this is a good thing. Motor Industries creates a, buy, a lot of buy orders for steel. And so we're going to put the Motor Industries into the back of this tier here, C tier, which brings us to automobiles. So currently, I think that there's three PMs in the game, and I had a discussion with a dev with this today. I think there's three PMs in the game that are just really, really bad. I think the most unambiguously bad PM is the Chainsaws PM, which if we look at the labor map, is going to cost uh, 100 or 55 worth of goods per 100 labor saved. Uh, and the next less e least efficient uh, labor saving PM is 35 uh, per worker. Uh, and so it's like not even in the like realm of like reasonable chainsaws PM is just disgustingly bad I think that one of the worst build or one of the worst PMs in the game or the probably the second worst uh, Is going to be uh, the automobiles PM The automobiles PM only adds a hundred worth of value now to be fair when you have automobiles on often the price of them will be extremely expensive and so this this PM will actually look a lot better in that sense because it will add a lot more net value like if we come in here right and if we increase the price of automobiles to i think it's like 43 uh, uh something is the the price if it's at plus 75 percent which it often can trend towards you see like it actually looks good uh, on the margin for efficiency per worker or per week of construction it's like okay that's reasonable however it's not very good if you don't make that type of assumption uh, it's only adding 100 value. It's a marginal value added per oil, which is an important thing to consider, is only five. Um, it, uh, it takes an extra 1,500 workers, and it also produces fewer engines. It's gonna cut out 20 engines, which means you're gonna need more motor industries, which is a industry which is gonna increase your demand for steel, which again is not a very efficient industry. So the downstream effects I think are also negative. I think that this is one of the worst PMs in the game. Uh, and currently, and to be fair, I could be wrong in this because I could be underappreciating the amount of infrastructure you get with automobiles. Currently, I just don't turn on the PM at all. Um, your pops won't consume the automobiles. It does say minimum 25%, but if there's none in your market, your pops won't consume it. This is a change instituted in 1.6 from 1.5. It used to be that your pops would just eat fake automobiles that didn't exist uh, as part of their needs because here, if we come in here, uh, we could take a look at transportation. Um, their transportation is alleged max 75%, which implies that 25% has to be consumed in automobiles. Let's scroll a little. Um, but if there are no automobiles in the market, it, they won't actually do this. They'll actually just consume all the transportation. This is a change in 1.6. In 1.5 specifically, uh, they, they would just consume the automobiles at plus 75% price, even though they didn't exist. Um, so I, I think you just don't turn on the PM. I think it's real bad. Um, I this of, of all my evaluations, this one I think I is the most likely I'm incorrect in, but obviously I don't think I'm incorrect. I think the PM is really bad. I think it looks really good and it makes the motor industry a lot more profitable. And then it makes it so you need to have more motor industries in your economy. It makes everything else that uses oil less profitable. It makes everything that uses steel less profitable. Um, it's because you're going to need more motor industries. Um, and so, uh, and more steel industries. I think it overall has a negative effect on your economy. Uh, 
uh, and the PM just like isn't very good. One of the reasons it is profitable because cars are so expensive is because it's so inefficient. Generally speaking, when something's really inefficient, it causes a really high price. And to be fair, there's maybe an argument where you can fiddle with it. Um, the, there's an argument to be made for wanting to be able to use the car's PM in the military, which is not something you could quantify, but this like plus 100 value and costing 1500 workers and also costing 20 oil business, uh, I mean, I'm not in the business of that business. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and so we are going to put the cars into D tier. Uh, we're going to put them. Eh, we're going to put a fine fine art here. Actually, let's put these ahead of fine art because they are capitalist owned buildings. Uh, just kind of going over some of my notes here. We're going to have these ahead of transportation. There's maybe. To be fair, you, you, what you can actually do is you can actually turn on the car's PM, create a massive amount of demand, and then it takes a while for it to roll down. So the metagame might actually be turning on cars, uh, waiting like one week or one day, then turning off all the cars, although I don't know exactly how this interacts with Radical's creation. In any case, rubber. Rubber is actually owned by aristocrats, and so in this sense, it's not very good for capitalist investment pool uh, type thing. But rubber is extremely important for uh, you know giving you the access to the super good tooling PM. To be fair, uh, the the I think that where you are have if you have a place that has rubber that also has clothing industries. I think it's probably worth using elastics. And there are a bunch of other PMs that also use rubber. Rubber is important to have from the military perspective. I think exporting it's fine. If we take a look at the rubber PM, which is like everything but what we looked at, I think I have it in here. Um, the, the PM is very efficient per construction, just extraordinarily efficient per construction, pretty efficient per worker. Um, and so it's just overall going to be very strong. So uh, shout out to rubber, we're gonna put you in A tier. Uh, it's 200 construction. This is important to emphasize. And so overbuilding it, uh, I, and it, a lot of the places where you have rubber, you're going to have a lot of la available labor and peasants. Um, the rubber plantations themselves, if I recall correctly, and we could take a look in game, uh, do not require a lot of qualifications relative to other industries, um, which is kind of an important consideration when you are building them in places like Boss Congo. Uh, if we take a look at the average wage, uh, we could see who's employed here. We see aristocrats, cap because we have on publicly traded um otherwise it would just be aristocrats farmers uh a little bit of machinists from using kind of this pm i believe creates machinists yeah it creates some machinists and a whole ton of laborers and a lot of cars outside and so um they're really really labor heavy which means it's easier for them to employ up in places where you don't have qualifications which can be the norm uh you know kind of just in the middle of africa so you get stuff like where you have like this this situation and maybe there's a uh, going textile mills and then just being like hey at least in here we'll use elastics um it might be worth using elastics more generally now depending on how much rubber you have available um but i i think that rubber is pretty solid and so we're gonna put it into a tier um let's jump back into the browser next up we have oil uh now oil we're gonna put right here uh, the thing about oil is oil PM is insane, and also uh, oil, you will get combustion relatively early, and before you get like, uh, before you get diesel pump engine on the mines, uh, oil just disgustingly outperforms everything, and then oil is also 400 construction, which is really nice. And then on top of that, oil is one of the very best PMs for employing machinists and getting the trade unionists to be more powerful. And so, and also oil is one of the most useful inputs um, or one of the most useful goods for having a bunch of inputs. The problem with oil is when you initially get it, you actually don't have very many things that demand oil. And it used to be, uh, in my opinion, uh, the case where in the tech tree, you know, you would often go plastics relatively early as your oil sink. But now the tech tree feels a little bit different, especially after 1.5. There are a lot of society techs like joint stock companies and stuff and investment banks that are worth picking up. And a lot of these that are more valuable, it can be more valuable to go some of these uh, such that and military, I think is a little bit more important and a little bit more spread out because Navy is worth investing into a little bit more than before. And so often it can feel a little bit hard to actually get the proper oil sinks. Uh, and so oil is a little bit of a weird one in that it's like not always good when you initially discover it. The problem is you don't have any demand for oil. Um, some of the PMs that aren't very good 
uh, that demand oil might be worth using just to create demand for oil. So for example, if you have pump jacks and you have a bunch of oil and you have zero uh, like demand for oil, it might be worth using cars. Um, but, uh, you know, when you start to get some of the oil PMs, uh, it, whether it's in the form of like vacuum canning or, um, plastics, as we mentioned, or the, the like rifling one, the, I think bolt action uses oil, if I recall correctly. Uh, I think that, uh, once you start unlocking some of these and you start being able to actually buoy up the price, it becomes good. However, um, if you can't, if you don't have the PMs for it, uh, oil is super exportable. You just absolutely, if the, if the price of oil is depressed, you should just export it and just blast as much as possible because the PM for it is extremely strong. You just, there's a mid-game awkward point where when you initially get oil, often it isn't useful yet, but it gets insane. Um, I think once oil gets rolling, you know, it's like up here or something, like it's just, well, it's just, it's ahead of wood. Uh, it's just behind gold in terms of like if it's if you have demand for it It's like one of the very best things to build although I guess the PMs not quite as good as the mines But the mines don't feed into as efficient PMs as oil does so um, Next up is electricity and electricity sucks and it's really hard to rank though uh, But if we take a look at uh, and this is something I the this was the third PM that I suggested to the devs today um, maybe needed to be changed and that is um, the PMs are just real bad on this. Uh, in particular, um, they're, they can be really bad because they just take a ton of labor. Um, and very often, you can have a plus 75% price on the hydroelectric plant specifically, and this is the plant pattern I'm in particular not a fan of. You can have plus 75% price on it and it be unable to employ up for profitability reasons, not qualifications reasons. And so, but here's the thing. Some of the very best PMs in the game like, if you look at the difference between sawmills and electric sawmills, it's huge. Uh, if you look at, uh, what is it, uh, urban centers, if you look at electric streetlights on a per-worker basis, it's insane. Not to mention it's giving you free infrastructure. You know, uh, almost all the industries that are going to be using electricity are insanely good. And so it's a difficult one to rank because it's definitely worth building, but it's mainly worth building because the other, the other things inside of it are good. Um, if we just jump back in the game real quick, I think very often what the play pattern is, is electrical generations alone, uh, okay, the electric sheet lights are good, the sawmills are pretty good, it's a little bit rough. I think very often you let this gnat spread to you and then you just beeline steam turbine to actually get the okay PM. Um, and then also electrical capacitors and electric railways. All of these PMs are extremely nice, especially the ones that improve railways, which are otherwise a really bad industry. Uh, Brian Electrolysis is one of just like the most insane PMs in the game. Like the, the, it leads into so many good things. And so it's very difficult to rank, um, but we can do it anyways. And we put it at the bottom of D tier. The PMs themselves suck. They feed in really well. They would have been like, this would have been like, if you couldn't consider, like, the fact that it turns on insane PMs, it would just be at the very back of, like, well, I mean, it would be ahead of tobacco, but that's about it. Um, and maybe, maybe I'm being a little bit too harsh here, actually. You definitely build it is the thing, and you build it pretty actively because the PMs are so good. Let's maybe consider it a little bit better where, okay, we'll put it, we'll put it ahead of... We'll put it just behind um, groceries, where groceries are kind of the last thing where you're creating an active build strategy around, um, uh, I, I think, pretty aggressively that's on this list. Well, I guess you do with, steam, uh, with motors, but motors kind of suck. So we'll, we'll, we'll upgrade it from our notes, uh, where we'll have, wait, where did electricity go? Am I just blind? Oh, no, wait, we actually didn't move it. Okay, we're going to have it just kind of here. And so this is this is entirely higher though. Just to be clear, if it's not uh, uh, clear enough, this is entirely higher as a result of um, the PMs that it leads into. Next up, let's talk about boats, um, where we're almost done here. And the boats or the the shipyards are going to be, generally speaking, very strong industries after the first one. The first one notably also turns on capitalist ownership before it's merchant ownership. So kind of after you have reinforced wooden ships, they become actually pretty good. I probably under-export boats. Um, and maybe boats companies are even underrated because 
uh, you takes less convoys to export boats as well, which is kind of like a weird thing going on. But it takes like almost no convoys to export boats, which makes sense because you just sail the boats. Uh, they don't take boats to use the boats. Although we could find a picture of a boat to tug in a boat. Um, uh, but I think that, um, yeah, the boats are going to be just extremely strong, uh, and we are going to, we're going to like the boats. Um, so, um, I, I think they're worth exporting. They're definitely worth using. We're going to put them up in A tier. Uh, I probably under-export them, but, um, we're going to put them behind the fish. Uh, even though steamers is the better PM, I think contextually the wooden boats are better relative to the other stuff that's going on. And finally, we have boom booms. The boom boom industries are the last ones. Um, and uh, for these, um, the last PM is extremely strong. Before that, they're not very good. But they have really good mappy feed in because um, the... Uh, what is it? Uh, they get fed into by sulfur and they feed back into sulfur. So they have really nice feedback loops. It's really nice to build them where you have mines and kind of just set them on auto expand and let them do their thing. Um, and so uh, in terms of a play pattern, big fan of this. I mean, brine electrolysis is the insane. But before you get that, it's really not that good. Or, well, I, I actually think they're really solid even before that. I do think it is an 800 cost building, though. So that's maybe... We're maybe going to take it a little bit lower than we had it in the notes, I think. Um, maybe we put it at the top of B tier. Uh, in our notes, we had this uh, in A tier, like right here. But I think that um, we have to judge it a little bit more contextually before Brian Electrolysis too, And like before Brian Electrolysis, it's like it's something you build, but it's not crazy. Uh, it is part of the construction loop, um, but we're going to have it there. And so there we have it. There's the tier list. Um, just kind of a quick rundown of the tier list, I suppose, uh, is that uh, on the very top here, um, wood is insane in the early game. It's just absolutely disgusting in the early game. You want to export it, just build as much of it as you can. It's really good for deep peasanting. Um, the, the, in particular, the sawmills PM is just insane in the early game. Like uh, 100 efficiency per construction. There's like nothing anywhere remotely in that neighborhood. And then it's still relatively efficient per worker, like in the early context of the early game. Uh, opium is just a very strong PM. Um, and also, you want to build opium so that your pops don't demand as much tobacco and to a lesser extent alcohol. Uh, small arms, uh, pretty much the most efficient uh, in industrial PM in the game. Um, you know, maybe we can make an argument that it's more like this uh, because very often you won't hit max economies of scale on small arms. Uh, their demand profiles also probably not as good as tools because uh, small arms, uh, the better PM or the best PM does demand a bit of oil, but it is one of the best oil or most oil efficient PMs in the game. So I think we're fine with it. Uh, tools are just very, very important. Um, you will be able to get economies of scale of 50, uh, which you will often not be able to get with the mines, right? Uh, and so being able to push economies of scale and then export to facilitate that push is really, really useful, which is not necessarily the case when you cap these out. Um, it's going to be a 600 construction cost building. Very nice. Uh, oil is insane. Before you get uh, the final uh, mine PM, it's kind of just like absolute king. And then the mine ones are all good. With sulfur being a particular notable example for having the best PM in game tied with gold. Gold giving minting on top of that, which is why gold is insane. Um, rubber is a very important input uh, and also doesn't require a lot of quals, which is important for where you can build rubber. Um, uh, you know, fish is the only other 200 construction cost building that's capitalist owned other than wood. Um, you know, uh, we have uh, the the boats, PMs are strong, the artillery PM is strong. Uh, luxury furniture, I think you never turn off um, in the furniture manufacturers. You always keep that blasting um, uh, for glass and uh, also for the clothes. I think you will more often turn down these PMs uh, on the luxuries, which is why their counterparts are higher, although you do not want to export these goods. These are kind of the exceptions where usually the higher up the things are on this list, the more you want to export it. You actually do want to actively export all of uh, the luxury buildings, so that's um, or the luxury clothes, uh, furniture, and porcelain uh, to make their other constituent thing uh, cheaper for SOL reasons, although for building profitability reasons, you actually want the prices to be basically the same as each other. Um, 
for uh, explosives, they have really good map building consideration, and Brian Electrolysis is insane, but the uh, PMs before that aren't as good. Um, for grain, I think if you have rye or rice specifically, you want to build a smattering of it throughout the game, but you don't want to super tank the price of it necessarily. Um, rice is the most uh, you know construction efficient PM in the game uh, on a per construction basis. So if you have a ton of peasants and you're not going to cause employment unemployment by building rice farms, rice farms are just disgusting. Um, just uh, they cost half as much construction as they should right now. Um, we'll see if that gets patched. Uh, fabric stands out a little relative to the other ones because you do get the 25% free throughput. And fabric dyes and silk altogether will be pretty good for mappy reasons because it'll allow you to build clothing manufacturers um, tall in the area, which will benefit both. Services are kind of not applicable. Um, uh, luxury clothing is going to be reasonable. I, I think it's. I think you create a flood of um, uh, porcelain and you really look to. Uh, or sorry. You create, you sometimes turn this off and just to have much more shirts because these are something that gets consumed a lot more than um, regular furniture. Um, liquor's weird because it's a secondary good in two spots. Um, it's in an incidental. Um, you can make an, I think I'm almost never exporting liquor, but I don't think I import it too often. Maybe I should be importing a lot more. Maybe it belongs in C tier. Um, the tanks and all the military goods, just very briefly, um, are probably worth, or all the mobilizing ones are probably worth exporting. You definitely want to have a supply. You don't want to run a shortage. Exporting it makes the price a little bit more normalized, whether you're mobilized or not, um, and um, smooths things out and can also cause um, your opponents, especially if you have a company for one of these, to run a deficit. Hardwood is just kind of medium. You turn it up uh, as much as needed to have a price that's kind of the equivalent of softwood, and that's just the consideration now, using the hardwood focus building. Um, the, there's some mappy play, but like I don't think, I think to the, whatever extent you're exporting this, you're also exporting this, and you're fine with that. It's kind of whatever. Um, for steel, not a very strong industry. It goes in C tier. Not very efficient per construction or per worker. You should generally expect to see relatively high steel prices in your market. I think there's even an argument for importing steel, particularly in the early game, because it's so inefficient per construction, because it costs 800 construction relative to like 200 construction on something like the Chop Chops. Uh, furniture, I think you uh, pretty much never turn, uh, turn on to the focus furniture uh, PM, which is why this is here. I think you also don't really ever want to export the basic goods of furniture or clothing. So for SOL reasons more than anything else. Um, but if making the building as profitable as possible, you actually want even prices. So maybe there's some context where it's okay. Um, paper, the industry is not very good. You do want to have it locally sourced, though, because you don't want to run a shortage. It's kind of the same thing for tools and radios uh, and, uh, you know, the, the groceries. I don't think you export these things. Maybe you export the radios and i don't know I, I i don't think it's quite there uh we bumped up electricity from the depths of d tier just entirely because the pms it feeds into are strong the electricity itself sucks um Fertilizer is kind of okay to build near sulfur. If there's an argument for fertilizer in particular and for exporting it, it's to increase downstream demand for sulfur. And so I think if you're playing a country like, you know, Italy that just happens to have a ton of sulfur or something like this, that actually aggressively exporting explosives, uh, fertilizer and the like are is incredibly reasonable. Um, the 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 porcelain is down here um even though you want to export it really aggressively just because often glass will be way more expensive than porcelain so you turn off the porcelain pm reasonably often uh you generally want to uh import all these agrarian goods for the most part they're not the most efficient agrarian goods and um yeah uh that way you're not building them you're not constructing them as much in your market this type of thing uh motor industries don't really uh they're not very efficient and they increase demand for steel so uh we already talked about the military stuff in particular ships demand does not increase as you mobilize so we have these in d tier the pms aren't very good and there's not much reason to export it um if it's fine arts we did mention a strategy building it on auto expand of the capital i think this is good uh auto industries the pm sucks it's one of the worst in the game um although i think I still think and I caveat this all the time that I could be incorrect in this, but I, I don't think I'm incorrect. Um, transportation kind of sucks. The PM sucks. You're mainly building railroads for infrastructure. Uh, it's rough. Like, I think railroads should be a little bit better. And then we have the final 
the final, well, the final two reasonable buildings that maybe there's a scenario where you build them, but the meat's not very efficient. You would build the fruit over the meat, but I still th don't think you want the fruit. I think you would rather consume the groceries, something like this. Um, and then there's the Hall of Shame um, tobacco, which you actively dislike because drugs no it's because um you want your pops to consume opium and liquor instead because those are much safer than tobacco anyways i hope you enjoyed if you did please feel free to like comment subscribe this is a hella long video and other than that um have a good day